What if I told you that the five secrets to becoming a millionaire is actually in one book, in one book alone? Would you believe me? Well, because I want you to think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you could become a first generation cash flow millionaire. I'll unpack this in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them chinches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And yes, we are back from the United States Naval Academy. What a week we had last week. If you want to check out the video, what we did on the obstacle course. That I attacked when I was United States Marine. Check this out right here. See, in my mind, I thought I'd be attacking this obstacle, of course, a certain way. But let's just say you should check out this video because I think my knees, my back, my hips completely had a different conversation with me. Actually, where we're going down through the course. But anyway, check out this video. Nevertheless, I want to help share with you the five secrets of becoming a first-generation cash flow millionaire in some areas of actual practicality are things you gotta write down. If you wanna know where I got these from, it's right here. This book by Napoleon Hill of How to Think and Grow Rich, which is a time-tested values and principles type book. Maybe people, people not maybe believing in Napoleon Hill as the individual, but man, he had some great values and principles in his work. One of my other favorite books for him was Outwitting the Devil that he also wrote to as well, but two of my favorite books of Napoleon Hill. But in this episode, I just wanna share with you these five secrets of becoming a millionaire. So let's break it down. Number one. You gotta keep your eye on specifics. Have specific numbers. Me and guys ask you a question in this modern day and era. And I said, you need to get to wherever you are at, whether it's your house, your church, your work, your kids' baseball practice. You need to get from here over to my exact location. What would you ask me? You ask me specifically what address I am at, would you not? And then specifically, you put it into an app on your phone that specifically will share with you what roads what highways, what obstacles, what quicker opportunities to get to one address, door to door, would be according to this GPS. So therefore you can save time, energy, gas, and money. So why is it that when we approach our goals to become a first generation cash flow in air, we don't get specifics? I mean, if we don't do this to our car, as simple as traveling and driving and getting from point A to point B, why would we do this with our finances? I mean, do you want to waste time? Do you want to waste money? Do you want to have unnecessary frustration? Well, if not, then you got to have specific goals, specific things that you want to accomplish, specific outcomes of why you're doing something to begin with. And part of that is eliminating what I call fat words, things that are unspecific. Oftentimes I run across people say, you know what, man, I'm so sick of this pandemic. I'm so sick of being broke. I'm so sick of living paycheck to paycheck. I'm so sick of my student loan debt. I said, no problem. Well, how much money do you need to make to eliminate all your financial problems. Well, I don't know. Well, how much money do you need to make to therefore leave your job on a full-time basis and go in business for yourself? That you're no longer dependent upon a job, you're no longer dependent on a boss, you're dependent now on you, that you are in 100% complete control of your income and your cash flow. What's the number? I don't know. Or, Matt, I just want to have enough money to be financially comfortable. I just want to have be able to slide my credit card without worrying about whether or not it clears or it gets rejected. I just want to have enough money to be comfortable. Awesome. What's the number? What do you mean? What's the amount of money you need in your bank account? <laughs> what type of monthly cash flow do you need? What type of income do you need to replace your job on a full-time basis? How much money do you need to specifically pay off your debt today? Well, I don't know. Well, if you don't know, you don't have a financial GPS. You're asking people for directions as you're going along the way, stop off at gas stations, hey, how do I get to this street? How do I get to this street? Is that the way you want to go? And most times, people don't know where you're going anyway because it's specific to you. It's your dream. And yet, because you didn't take the time to sit down and write some goals down, you were unspecific with it, you don't have a financial GPS, and you don't establish these things called OKRs, which is Objectives and Key Results. You know, at the start of this year, we laid out OKRs for our company at the beginning of this year, things we need to accomplish, and we create a marketing plan and a, and a financial strategy plan and a progress plan, a campaign plan to make sure that we engage our team, our sales force, our operations to get in on the same vision of where we're going to take our company. You know, it's crazy what we're doing as a company that uh, our company's ready right now to write a $5 million check to award our top 30 guys in our company, giving them exotic cars, Porsches, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, 
Corvettes, it's crazy if we do our part, because this budget is set aside to reward our guys. It's already specific, it's already clear. We already did a marketing campaign. Now it's up to us, specifically, what do we gotta do on a day and data basis to make sure we hit those numbers so our guys can be awarded cars, 30 cars. Then we'll take our guys to Corvette, we'll take our guys to Italy for, uh, uh, for Ferrari dealership, Lamborghini dealership. Specifically, I will be going to the Rolls Royce dealership. <laughs> Specifically, I already know the color. I already know the type of starlight. I know the type of rims. I know exactly the, the, the dealership here, the car dealership. I'll be purchasing a Forgiato rims at to put on this Rolls Royce Cullinan. Specific, baby. Okay? So, by the way, we've done a video on this to discuss these strategies. So, check out this video here, how millionaires create and pass down generational wealth. So, check out this video too as well. We discussed certain things about that to complement this specific area of practicality. Number two, what are you willing to give up? You know, oftentimes people say, Man, I want success, I want success, but I'm not willing to give up anything. Well, let's take a physical approach to this. Not a financial, but physical. If you wanted to get in shape, don't you gotta get up sugars? Don't you gotta give up fast food? Don't you gotta give up fried food, oily food? For some of you, you gotta eliminate carbs, sugar, bread, Certain things you gotta get up to get yourself in financial shape. And on top of that, you gotta give up some TV time, you gotta give up some sleep in time to go to the gym, okay? But if people wanna do that from a physical standpoint, and they're willing to do it because they want a six pack, right? They want a six pack, they wanna be shredded, they wanna cut, they wanna bulk up, they wanna lose weight, they wanna fit in a dress, they wanna look a certain way in a tank top, they wanna look a certain way on the beach. Well, if they're willing to give up something physically, well, why not financially? Perhaps for a period of time, you got to stop spending X amount of dollars on this because it's not giving you a return your money. Perhaps you need to cut off these type of subscriptions, these types of unnecessary charges on your phone for this, whatever that may be. Unnecessary expenses or now you cut back on certain things or find ways to increase our cash flow, mitigate our expenses, so therefore we have more profit than we do have leftover expenses. Maybe some of the things that you need to consider giving up. Temporary sacrifice for permanent happiness. Are you willing to do it? Temporary sacrifice for permanent happiness. Are you willing to do it for a season of time? Are you willing to do what it takes, necessary what it takes to plant the seed, cultivate the seed, plant more seeds, cultivate those seeds, plant more seeds, cultivate even those seeds, plant more seeds, cultivate the seeds, and boom, next thing you know, it's harvest time. But oftentimes people have such this get rich quick mentality says, plant, cultivate, harvest, all the same season. It doesn't work that way. There's a season to plant, there's a season to cultivate, there's a season to harvest, there's a season to enjoy. You can't have that all in the same season. Other part of this is consider the sacrifice that other people make. Well, if other people are willing to sacrifice certain things to get ahead financially, to perhaps go from two cars to one car, right? Or perhaps cut a, a cable or a cut you know, certain foods, unnecessary foods, uh, certain things out of your budget. If people are willing to do that, how come you're not willing to do that? Third part about this is also discipline. If you don't discipline your financial situation, your financial situation will discipline you. Oftentimes I find myself in a situation like, why am I so broke? Why is my credit like this? Why is nobody saying yes to me on a credit application? You know why? Because I showed lack of discipline. Jan Levinson, one of the first tapes I heard in terms of personal development, and yes, I just did say tapes, but one of the tapes I heard for her, she said, listen, your bank account is a reflection of your consciousness. Your cash flow is a reflection of your awareness, and your credit score is a reflection of your attitude. So consider that. If you don't discipline yourself, then your situation will discipline you. Number three, definitive date. Specifically, back to number one, specifics on the date, specific deadlines. You know, we, uh, we, we hire uh, people here at our firm. We have recruit agents, sales agents, on an independent contract, 1099 basis. And one of the things we encourage them to do as soon as they come on board is to set your licensing date once you come on board. So therefore, you can pass your license. So therefore, we can get you paid. The reason why people don't get paid is because they never set a specific definitive date to take the exam. Now, once we started tracking people, said, listen, as soon as you come on board, part of our onboarding process, boom, we have an onboarding date. You come on board, 
three, four, five days later, you, you complete the pre-licensed exam, uh, three, four, five days later, you take the exam and you pass first time. So we have a definitive, why? Because so many people are horrible at being good bosses to themselves. That unless somebody assists them in setting up a date, things just never get done. I don't know what type of student you were, but uh, many students out there, like myself, we often waited to the very last minute to submit our homework, our ex uh, prepare for the exam, and sadly we won it. We winged a lot of things in our life. But once we decided to put a definitive date and had certain projections of things that we want to accomplish, because the reasons why we want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire were this big, our reasons were this big, guess what we started doing? Boom, dates. Already we've got campaigns set up for the remainder of our year. We've got campaigns from the beginning of what we're going to do throughout the year, and then it's just a matter of execution throughout the year. Like we're about to wrap up a specific campaign for our organization. We're already ready to launch our next campaign come June 1st for what we're supposed to do in December. And then we're gonna launch another campaign in August because we want to do something at the beginning of the year to get our guys off to 2022 very quickly. But we're already thinking about this already in 2021, halfway mid-year, not even halfway mid-year through the year, second quarter of 2021 because we have definitive dates, we have deadlines. So therefore, we're not playing behind the eight ball, behind the park. How many times do you find yourself all the time behind, 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 behind? You know why? No definitive dates. And by the way, this is a, probably a soft call out to many of you who are raised in a culture, raised in a family, raised in based on your ethnic backgrounds. That when somebody said the party starts at seven, in your mind, you show up at nine, right? However, your family called it, drop it in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you're thinking and what your thought is and what your experience is of when your family says a party's at seven o'clock, what time do you actually show up to the family party? Okay. So in business, in terms of goals, especially becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire, that doesn't fly. That doesn't work. Do you know why? Because silently, you're actually lying to yourself. When somebody says seven o'clock in your mind, you say, okay, we'll show up, we'll be there. We'll be there at seven, but actually show up at nine. You're actually silently lying to yourself. Subconsciously, you're telling yourself, procrastinate, delay, we'll get there later. That doesn't happen when we have definitive dates. Now, oftentimes when you start your business, when you start your campaign, there's specific ways how you started. Once you got some maturation and some skills and some experiences, there's also plans of how you operate right now. So expect that along the way. There's certain ways you start off in terms of goals, your first experiences, your first shot at a couple of things, but expect failures and setbacks along the way. That's part of the process, it's part of growth. It's part of having pressure and resistance come your way because it's already a strengthening process. By the way, I just want to let you know and remind you, encourage you. If becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire was easy, everybody would be doing it. Now, with that being said, becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is actually simple. I didn't say it was easy, but it's simple because a couple things. Number one, most people quit sadly too soon. And number two, it's fairly easy when you have a blueprint and a formula along the way. And number four, you have a definitive plan. Do you have your next moves planned? Okay, you got to point A. Okay, do you know where your point B is? Okay, you have point B. Do you know point C is? Okay, your point C. Do you know what point D is? Do you base yourself based on only goals or is it based on systems? Because go say, okay, I got to $100,000. I got to this promotion. I got to this level of sales. I got to this level of accomplishment. Then what? What's next? If you don't find a marker to fight for the next thing, guess what's going to happen? Not only will you hit your goal, but you're going to regress because, oh, I got my goal. Oh, I got the house. Oh, I got the car. Oh, I got the promotion. Oh, I got this. But unless there's something else next, oh, hopefully I hang on to it. Oh. Hopefully I retain it. <laughs> so you gotta find the next thing. And we're looking at a plan, a definitive plan. It's not only the date that you start or the plan that you start, but how it looks like along the way. And sometimes if you're tracking certain dates and certain, certain plans, guess what starts happening to the date? You start compressing time frames. Listen, when I started getting coached and mentored by Patrick Bed David, he's actually selling to my wife. He says, Sheena. You're going to make $20,000 a month. At that time, my wife was making six figures at a job at Stryker Medical. Now, I've been exposed to this world, but my wife hadn't. And so thank God for a mentor that's involved in your life. 
He started casting her a vision of what $20,000 a month would look like. Next thing you know, she didn't believe it, but we did the plan, we set the date, we set these things in motion, we figured out what we're gonna give up. You know, speaking of what we gave up, she and I decided to get married. 221, 2015. Do you know what we gave up? Talk about delayed gratification. You know what we gave up? My wife said this, because I felt so bad because my financial position wasn't where it was supposed to be. And she says, babe, I don't care so much about investing so much in the wedding, because that's one day. I'd rather invest in our marriage. If that means we have a simple wedding, we have no honeymoon, so be it. We just want to be married, do the right thing, according to our faith, to our commitment towards one another, we decided to get married. And guess what uh, a lot of people don't realize? On my wedding day, guess where I was? I was at the office from 9 to 12 o'clock in the morning. I was running a workshop. I was training our new agents. I was getting kicked out of the office because my guys didn't want me to be late to my own wedding. We got married, had a blast. We had a reception in a church basement. We had a potluck. Everybody brought their foods that they're ethnically inclined to eat during celebrations like this. We had all sorts of food. More importantly, we had no liquor. We just had bottled water. And guess what? We had a blast. We had a blast. I think we spent less than $1,000, $1,500 on our wedding. And my wife's dress was about three or four, three or four or five hundred bucks. But that's what we gave up because we had a date. We had a plan. And guess what has happened over the years? We not, we not only took our first trip to Dubai, company paid trip. We not only went to Costa Rica. We not only uh, been to Greece. We not only been to Cancun, Hawaii. All over, we've been to some of the top resorts where multimillionaires and decamillionaires and billionaires go to. The Breakers in Palm Beach, hanging out on yachts with hedge fund managers and equity fund uh, 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 owners, talking about what is gonna take our business to the next level. We've made millions and millions of dollars. Was that worth it? Ask yourself, was that worth it for us? More importantly, would it be worth it for you? Speaking of which, I want you to check out this video here on three avoidable phases. I'm becoming a millionaire. Check out this video here. Three unavoidable phases of becoming a millionaire because oftentimes people say, wow, I hit this phase, hit this phase. I didn't expect that. Well, anticipate. Large part about understanding your steps and your next moves is anticipating these phases. So check out this video. Last but not least, do you read your plan out loud every day? Do you have affirmations? Do you have things you say out loud that, hey, listen, your kids know about it. Your family knows about it, that your vision is so clear, people are attracted to it because your attitude and your energy is high. It's positive, it's attractive, it's an endearing quality that a lot of people just want to be around. You know, when I look at the key areas of my life, my faith, family, finance, fitness, and fun, I line up affirmations and things I speak out loud that I want to have come into life. There's something very, very powerful when you speak something and your subconscious mind receives it and retains it you just automatically start programming your brain to see the world according to those affirmations. And, you know, oftentimes I run across a lot of people that sadly somebody had offset their limitations on them. Somebody had offset their fears upon them. Somebody has offset their concerns upon them, which caused them to never get started. And how sad that is. But the opposite is true. You can hang around somebody who offsets their excitement, their positivity, their enthusiasm, their encouragement, their courage, period. And say, man, I need to hang around this type of person because every time this person picks up the phone, every time I go to a restaurant with this person, or every time we negotiate a contract, every time we have this conversation in boardroom and around people that most likely have odds stacked against them, they come out like a master negotiator and things happen that we never thought would happen because of your affirmations and the power of what you say and what you put out to the universe. It's interesting how the universe likes to reward you with that, of course, with conditions and setbacks along the way. But if you continue to have these affirmations, the power of the spoken word, we talked about this on our Sunday night Bible study, the seven figure scripture series, is that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And so it's not only powerful to you, but it's powerful to your family, the people that are around you all the time. And we're just recording a project 
in Dallas a couple weeks ago. My son, my 10-year-old son, decided to journey with me and travel with me to uh, four different cities, five different days, six different airports. And he was off in the studio area where we're recording. And as we were recording for two, three hours, he was occupied by his Minecraft, occupied by reading his book, occupied with what 10-year-olds do. And as soon as we got done, cut, done, it's a wrap. My son says from the corner, hey, Dad, I never knew that happened to you. Hey, Dad, I never knew you said that about that. I never knew you felt that way about this. I said, oh, why the kid's listening? I thought he was involved in his thing. He's actually hearing a lot of things. Why? Because he heard me speak things out loud. And that can help you, either good or bad, based on the language that you speak out each and every day, based on your affirmations, your goals, your dreams, your dates, your deadlines, and your plans. This thing here is not that difficult, guys. And the thing is, most people would rather be entertained. There's, I think there's a comment saying, how come these videos, this channel doesn't get millions and millions of subscribers, but uh, fight videos and, and uh, a, a tabloid top video channels and whatever nonsense video channels, which in its own right, in a weird type of way, gets compensated with Google AdSense, but how to self-help, encouragement, strategy, thinking type videos, don't get the same way. It, it doesn't matter. We're here to help the very few of you that want to watch these episodes and actually implement it. And I know you're out there watching this because every time I think about these videos, you know what I think about? I think about the 20-year-old, 30-year-old version of me out there looking for hope, looking for guidance, looking for someone to help, looking for some direction, and hopefully I'm connecting with you. That being said, guys, before I let you go, again, watch these suggested videos. Again, how millionaires create and pass down generational wealth and three unavoidable phases of a first generation cash flow millionaire. With that being said, guys, I love knowing your thoughts, your questions, your follow-up, your feedback. Drop them in the comment section below. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart, and be money smart today.